April 9th, 2020. Thursday of Holy Week, Holy Thursday, Evening Mass of the Lord's Supper. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one, and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate, with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, 
after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. This is Catholic Daily Reflections for Holy Thursday, the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Today's reflection is entitled, Cleansed by the Greatest Humility. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. It was a beautiful image of the deepest humility ever witnessed. Jesus, the eternal Son of God, the second person of the Most Holy Trinity, was exercising the duty of a servant. One by one, Jesus went around and cleansed the feet of his disciples. It was the celebration of the Passover, a holy feast, a remembrance of God's saving action to their ancestors the night they were set free from slavery in Egypt. However, this Passover remembrance was certainly one to be remembered and embraced. Peter was overwhelmed by Jesus' humility and at first refused to have his Lord wash his feet. But Jesus says something that rings true for all eternity. Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. This was no ordinary washing. It was not in reference only to the washing of Peter's dirty feet. It was an eternal washing of his immortal soul, and the water would soon flow forth from the pierced and sacred heart of Jesus himself. Less than 24 hours later, Jesus would be on a cross and a Roman soldier would pierce his heart with a lance. From his heart flowed blood and water, the new font of grace and mercy itself. This last supper with our Lord was 
the sacramental institution of the cleansing power of his one and perfect sacrifice, which is now made present to us throughout time in the gifts of baptism, confirmation, and the Holy Eucharist. Every time we renew our baptism, receive his spirit more deeply into our lives and consume his sacred body and blood, we participate in this cleansing action of Christ to Peter and the other disciples. Jesus looks at each one of us with a gaze of love and says, Unless I wash you, what is your response to our Lord? It takes humility to accept the humblest act of mercy ever known. We must humbly acknowledge that we need our Lord to cleanse us, to wipe the dirt from our souls, to redeem us and to offer us the inheritance of everlasting life. It is at that Last Supper, the beginning of the first triduum of Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday, that our Lord gazes through Peter to each one of us and offers to cleanse us of all sin. What is your response? How humble are you in your reception of this gift? How deeply do you believe in the saving sacrifice of our Divine Lord? Reflect this night upon those sacred words of our Lord and hear them spoken to you. Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Say yes to this offer of perfect humility and mercy from our Lord and let the saving sacrifice of the Son of God enter more deeply into your life than ever before. Let us pray. My merciful Lord, your humility is awe-inspiring and overwhelming. Please wash me clean with the blood and water flowing forth from your pierced heart. Help me to receive this gift in the way it was given, with humility. I thank you. I say yes to your gift. I receive you and I invite you to cleanse me. I am a sinner, dear Lord. I need your cleansing action in my life. Jesus, I trust in you.